So, what time are you going to be here? Tyler asked me impatiently, his voice obviously frustrated. Because, like, the storm's going to hit any second, and I want to get dinner cooked now in case the power goes out. I glanced up at the gray sky from underneath my umbrella and saw a large front of ominous-looking clouds steadily drifting this way. No joke, I replied as I shouted over the sound of falling rain and thunder. I'm on the corner of Eldred and Warren now, so I'll be there in like five minutes. All right, I'll start the oven now. I flinched at a practically loud crack of thunder and quickened my pace. What are we eating anyway? I asked, trying to keep my mind occupied and help ignore the squishing of my soaking wet socks. Eh, guess. Tyler responded, and I can imagine his cocky grin. I sighed knowingly. <sighs> Pepperoni pizza with black olives and jalapenos. Pepperoni pizza with black olives and jalapenos. Yes, sir, that is correct. Tyler began. It is the ultimate comfort food, as you get a little bit of everything. You got your vegetables, you got your dairy, you got your wheat, and... Are you here yet? I looked around confused in the rain. No. Oh, never mind then. I thought I heard the doorbell. I shook my head. You don't even have a doorbell. You just complained about it yesterday. The rainwater was collecting now, running down the street and sidewalks in a rapid turret. I could see the stream break against my boots, carrying dirt and leaves and little twigs with it. I shivered as the wind blew harder and cast misty spray against my face and neck. I slipped and caught myself against a fence post. Hey man, I'll be there in a bit. I'm gonna hang up before I bust my ass and my new phone. See ya. See ya. I hung up and slid my phone into my pocket. A flash of lightning lit up the sky and I blinked. As I trudged along the lines of yards where the sidewalks ended, I grimaced at my boots and slipped in and out of the mud, with squeaking wet squishes letting me know I would soon be filthy. I cursed under my breath and silently berated myself for taking this walk. I should have just stayed home. Walking three miles through the rain with a storm on the way just to hang out was a terrible idea. Should have just stayed in bed. My conversation with myself continued for several minutes until at long last. Sopping wet and freezing, I found myself on the doorstep of TJ's new house. It was old and weathered, with faded paint and windows. So scratched, they looked foggy. The glass, despite the rain, was yellow and dead. I walked up the cracked driveway to the front door. I knocked on it loudly and shivered as I wrapped my arms around myself. No answer. I knocked again, banging my fists against the wooden door so hard... Flecks of chipped green paint broke off and filtered the ground. Tyler, it's me. Open the damn door. The door swung open with a loud creak and Tyler's face smiled at me from within. Sorry, man. I couldn't hear you over all the noise. He waved me inside and I kicked off my boots and threw my jacket in the corner to get the wet chill off of me. He looked me over and laughed, his green eyes crinkling at the corners as he goffed at my current state. So, how'd it go? He asked sarcastically. I groaned and headed down the hall. Lovely. Now where's your bathroom? First door on the left. Pizza's almost done at least. He called after me as I padded down the wood floor in jeans heavy with rainwater. The house was bigger than I expected. The shirt was old and needed a lot of work done, but it was still good sized. It had that old 70s layout with lots of little rooms sectioned off into their own little areas. As such, I didn't see much of the place as I walked past closed doors to get to the bathroom. The door at the end of the hall inched open as I approached, then shut a moment later. I guess his roommates aren't the chatty type. Works for me. I toweled off in the bathroom and laid my dreams out to dry, slipping into a pair of sweatpants Tyler's had sat on the counter for me. I flicked the light off and went down the hall towards the kitchen to get some pizza. My stomach growling ravishly. The door at the end of the hall squeaked open behind me, and then the bathroom door closed. I looked over my shoulder and saw the bathroom light on again. 
Here's your half, Tyler announced as he set four slices of pizza on the table. TV signals out due to the weather, but we can still watch a movie. Sounds good. I mumbled through a piping hot pizza and followed him into the living room. The house was dark. I noted, in every room. The floors were all wood, no carpet, and the walls were painted a deep gray, like the thunder clouds overhead. The lights seemed to dim despite having new bulbs. I shivered. Tyler glanced at me. Still cold? I can get you a hoodie if you want. I nodded and he tossed me a red pullover. Some comedy I wasn't really paying attention to played on the television. Tyler laughed here and there, sometimes repeating the jokes and pointing. But I felt detached. I set my pizza down. Appetite diminished and flinched as one of the bedroom doors in the house slammed shut. I can hear them moving around the room, possibly rearranging furniture, and glanced at Tyler to see if he was reacting to the noise. But he wasn't. Having lived only on my own since graduation, I wasn't used to having someone else in the house. My apartment was small. Not quite cramped, but not completely on the cozy side either. As such... I had everything exactly as I wanted it and not a single thing out of place. It was quiet and well lit with thick, cushy carpet and central heating, one bedroom, one bath, zero roommates, making such a ruckus. I opened my mouth to voice my concerns, then realized it could come off as kind of snobbish. I bit my lip and kept silent, not wanting to offend my friend by insulting his new house and roommate, whom I have never even met. You full already? Tyler asked me as I shrugged. Not really hungry, I guess. Well, damn, he said, reached out and snatched my remaining slices. I'll just take these off your hands then. My mouth felt dry and sticky, so I got up and walked over to the kitchen. My mind still wandering as I listened to the commotion going on in the next room. There was a loud scraping, like somebody dragging a bed or a dresser, and I can even feel the vibrations rumbling through the floor. I sipped on my tea and looked around the kitchen, noting the lack of appliances and that there were only two chairs at the table. The scraping suddenly stopped. The bedroom door creaked open loudly and I looked up from my cup, expecting to see someone coming down the hall. Instead, I heard a different door open and shut, followed by a loud thumping like somebody jumping up and down. What the hell are they doing in there? Tyler laughed loudly as a series of shouts echoed from the flat screen into the empty house. I glanced up at him and then the TV, when the light in the kitchen went out. A door slammed in the hall. The movie continued to play, and I could see the light on the microwave still blinking. Cheap-ass bulbs. I groaned and went to turn the light off before switching the light bulb. When I paused, the light switch was down. I glanced back at Tyler and then peered into the hall, the endless knocking and banging still going strong. So, what's the deal with this place? I asked aloud as I flipped the switch and the light came back on. What do you mean? Tyler asked after moments of distraction as he paused the movie. I sat down in the lumpy chair his dad had given him and gestured to the whole house with my hands. Like, how'd you get it? Who's it from? Oh... Just some old man, Italian I think, Mr. Scarpio or something. I waited for him to continue, but he just took a bite of his pizza. And how'd you hear about it? He shrugged. I saw it posted online. Me and like two other guys came and looked at it. One of them got it. But then the old man called me back like a week later, saying that it was available, so I moved in. I chewed my lip. Why was it open again? The guy moved out, just up and left. The wall behind me jolted violently and knocked over a bottle of whiskey Tyler had on display. It shattered and splashed across the floor, leaving the house suddenly silent. Tyler cursed loudly and jumped up to clean it. All right, enough of this crap. I don't care if it's rude. This is nothing compared to what that douchebag in the other room is doing. I sighed and sipped my tea as Tyler threw a towel over the spilled liquor. Hey, ma'am, seriously, what is up with your roommate? 
Tyler looked up from the towel and laughed. His eyes stared up at the ceiling before meeting mine. That's how I got this place so cheap. I tilted my head to the side, confused. So what? He just pays a bigger share of the rent? He laughed again and sat down, looking around for the remote. The commotion in the room escalated suddenly to an all-time high, and I grew tense. My fingers dug into the armrest of the chair. The walls rattled and shook, as if there was an earthquake, even the windows jostling. Tyler pressed play on the remote, the couch beneath him creaking as the impacts against the wall hit it. Nah, man. He glanced at me out the corner of his eyes. I don't have a roommate.